turn my mic up. Hello! Hi everyone! This is Hi. so exciting! I'll wait a moment for everyone to join. Make sure my sound is coming through for you. This is so cool! Hi everyone! Welcome! Well, this is so exciting. <laughs> We are on, I'm here in San Francisco in my home with my kids. You want to say hi? Hi. You want to say your names? I'm Mira. I'm Josie. Mira and Josie are going to hang out with us for this. So I am so excited. This, normally, uh, I, I, can't, I can't see you guys, but I know you're all here. So it's just really exciting for me. And I know normally we're doing this, you know, maybe you watch it at school. Maybe you do homeschool and you watch this. But this is sort of a special event. This is this is cool. You are here in my home. We are in San Francisco, California. This is week, we're starting week four of sheltering in place in San Francisco. We started this a little bit before a lot of other people started sheltering in place. I can't even remember which day it is. I think it's like day 26 or something like that. I don't know. I haven't been counting. Yeah, we have some fun things planned. So we thought one thing we would do since since a lot of you are in the same boat and you're sheltering in place at home, you're not able to go to school right now, we thought one thing we could do is we could do a little show and tell to start with and show some of the fun things we're doing to have fun, to, to not feel so cooped up in our houses while we're home and we're staying safe. So um, we'll do that. We're also going to do, in a little while, we're going to do a fun activity. And I thought we'll end today by taking some questions. Are we ready to get started? Should we do it? Okay. So... Uh, show and tell. Fun things we've been doing around our house. We've been, so actually let me show them you guys. There's, if I switch to this, there we go. So, you know, rainbow, making rainbow drawings has been really popular as a symbol of keeping our spirits up, staying happy. And Mira and Josie have definitely been making rainbow chalk drawings. They did this one with um, blue tape as the outline, it's like stained glass. And then if I turn on that one, you can see some of the designs they got, like a heart. And if I do that one, that's the finished design they did for that. And so this is something fun you can do if you have chalk, or if you don't have chalk to make some rainbows and hang them up in your windows, or a fun thing that you can do. We have also been doing, let me switch to this. We have been doing some, we have a little dance party we do. Now, we don't normally do dance parties in our house, but we were starting to feel like kind of cooped up. And so every evening at seven o'clock, we just turn on some dance music and do a little dance party. I can show you a video of that. <laughs> That's the one here where you didn't really want to be seen. Josie did some great twirls there. Yeah, cool. So that's something fun I recommend everyone try too. And we're very lucky because before all of this happened, before shelter in place, um, we, we have our pets at home. We have our cat, he might make an appearance here. I don't know if he's gonna run out. But we also have, um, which you might've seen in Mystery Dog before, we have, the, the girls call him Mr. Turtle. Yeah. He's technically a tortoise. And so- oh, who cares? Yeah, same thing. same thing, there he is. He lives on land, and I brought him up into our living room. He's not normally in our living room. He has He's his normally own. Normally in the garage. Yeah, he has his own little like enclosure in the garage. Is he gonna poop? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but there is Mr. Tortoise doing good, getting fed. What do you guys feed him every day? We feed. Um, we have the job of feeding our pets, and we feed him kale and lettuce. Sometimes. Strawberries for a treat. Mm, strawberries are like his favorite treat. He doesn't get them very often. But yeah, he's a vegetarian, so he loves any kind of leafy greens. We and can also feed him mint. We mint have leaves, a, we yeah. Have a nice mint plant. Yeah. Feeding him. Yeah. So he's doing good. And then we also have a special pet with us. Um, a lot of you out there, if you have like a class pet, you think about maybe one one student was sent home with the class pet. Sometimes that's like usually over 
like spring break or a weekend. Or but, summer break. Or summer break. But if you went home with a class pet now, you've got the class pet for a while, don't you? And that's our situation. We yeah. have the class pet as I well. I volunteered for my class pet. All right, since do you, I've taken care of him many times. Do you guys want to okay. show him? Yes. Okay, here we go. You can't exactly pick him up, Dad. You can. Yeah, I can. Here, let me get him. Come here, Toby Toby. He's not, he doesn't really like to be this is our class. Oh, whoa! Did he fall? There he is. Yes. You guys can toad. see the class toad. <laughs> it's pretty boring. He's making like a little clucking sound right now. He doesn't like to be picked up, as Mira said. <laughs> so we'll put him back. Woo! Don't jump! Don't he jump. wants to jump. Like, get me back into my cage. Yeah, but he's doing good. And Mira, you want to show them what you feed the toad? Oh yeah, I can pick those up easily. <laughs> Disgusting stuff. You don't like this? No, but you were brave and you picked one of these up. So the toad is not a vegetarian. He eats these little mealworms. Oh, you see I'm holding one. I think I can find a live one in here. No, I'm, I'm holding a live one. You got a live one? Yes, look. Oh, yeah. There it's you crawling. go. It's Yeah. I don't know they if you guys can see that. They don't bite and they, like, they just feel like little, they tickle just a little on your hand. Like it's just crawling there. I can hear Mr. Turtle. Digging around in his box. Yes, he probably wants to get back into his cage. There's some other fun things you can do too. I mean, for for me, um, we don't we're not going to our office at Mystery anymore. We're all working from home, and with working from home, that means we're using video conferencing. And I know a lot of students are learning to use video conferencing as well for the first time. But I there's just, yeah. I just got off a lesson and my morning circle. They were just cramped like together, like just like nine minutes ago. Doing video conferencing? Yeah. Yeah? We were using Zoom. You were using Zoom? Some people are using Zoom. There's other services people are using for video like, conferencing. Like um, FaceTime, Google Hangouts. Those Skype. Are Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Those are other ones. And, and, you know, there's some fun things you can do with video conferencing. So at work, I've been having a good time. So I'll show you. So for example, uh, you can change your background. I've tried the the uh, Golden Gate Bridge background to leave my house, which is nice. I can do uh, a nice Minecraft background there. Oh, how did you get that? I'm going to do that sometime. <laughs> I could even make it so, like, if I want to have uh, a villager, you know, and you got to make, hmm, 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 you got to make his sounds. Hmm. This is a fun one to try on my coworkers. Like, wait, what's, oh, 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 it's a T-Rex. Oh, that's a little scary. If I want to do this one, I can even, you know, I can, Whoa, I can, Science. I can feed him a little bit there. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, so you can have fun with video conferencing. My uh, teachers are pretty strict about that and they're not letting us do anything. No much. crazy backgrounds. No chat, no crazy backgrounds. You have to have your real background, your real name on the thing. Like, they're pretty strict with that. Well, it's neat because on some of them, it's like a green screen. So if you insert an image, it might be something you can play with on your own time. Um, other fun things we've done. Well, you know, something funny you guys did to me, which yeah. is they were watching the Mystery Dog mini lesson we had about April Fool's. And I'm pretty sure that is when you got the idea to play an April Fool's prank on me. And, and mom. And um, I woke up on April 1st and I noticed there was no hand soap and there was no toilet paper anywhere. So let me see if I can find this. Well, that's not the picture there. <laughs> yeah, wrong picture. I don't think I have this picture. But there, all of the toilet paper was missing and then I heard someone giggling and I found out. You want to tell them? I stuffed all the toilet paper and the hand soap in me and Josie's bathroom so we'd have plenty. So she hid the toilet paper on us. So teachers and parents watching this, if you know, my child chose at this moment in history to hide toilet paper, which was not lost on her. She thought that was very clever. Toilet paper! I did, I did, paper. I did laugh. But let's, let's, on that note, um, I thought something fun we can do today is a little activity using a material you might have around the house that's maybe not quite as precious as toilet paper. So <laughs> this, this activity cold. is, uh, if you have some aluminum foil, and it doesn't involve that much, you, you really only need just to rip a few sheets. And here's, so I've done that here. 
And if you want to try this at home, you can either do it after this video, or if you want to go grab aluminum foil right now. And um, kids, if you do this, the only really dangerous part is aluminum foil has like sort of sharp teeth in that. So you'll want to get a grown up to help rip a sheet off like this. But if you can just get them to rip like two or three sheets is all you need. And the thing you can do with aluminum foil that's really fun, you want to grab one? Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll get this one. There. I think it might be really noisy, so when we do it, let's see. Let's actually, can we set it down just for one second? Yeah. What I'll do is I'll show everyone and I'll show you guys as well. So the thing that's great about aluminum foil is you can use it to make any kind of shape that you want. It's like, um, parents and teachers watching this, it's like a non-messy modeling clay. It's amazing for making sort of 3D visualizations of things. Really great for any kind of engineering you want to do. And I have to give credit to my friend Keith and his son Evan. They introduced us to this. So Keith has taught me some simple things you can do. Like let's say, here's a really simple thing you guys can do with one sheet. If you want to make like a pet snake. I know what I'm doing. All right, you go ahead and make whatever you want. So I'm gonna make a simple snake. And... Give his mouth right there. And then with that snake, you know, you can go sneak that into your parents under their pillow, scare them. What are you making? I'm making like a little hummingbird. A hummingbird? I made kind of like a hummingbird right here. Like that's the beak, this is the body, and then it has a little lady tail there. See, cool. And all of this, these are really simple ones you can do quickly. You but you can get pretty fancy with these. You want to make a snake? No, I want to make a solid. You know, and it doesn't even have to be an animal. Like if you want to make a scene, like I'm going to make here, I make like a tree. Oh, I once made a tree with a bird's nest and two baby birds with a mama bird in it. And some branches that the mama bird can sit on and an elephant underneath. Kind of weird, but fun. So you can make a little like tree scene here. So I thought one thing we can do is my friend Keith and his son Evan, they actually filmed a video showing some of the creations they've made over the past few weeks using aluminum foil. What'd you make? You made a sword. It's actually pointed at there. Uh-huh. You've got to be careful with it. They're quite a bit better. So Can I feel it? They're quite, they're more, they're better at making aluminum foil things, so you might see more um, detailed things over in that video. Should we go say hi to Keith? Let's do it. Here's an example of hey, a new leg. It's Keith and Evan here. Just like, you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Evan. Evan loves to make things out of aluminum foil, so I invited him to show off some of his creations. What are some of your favorite animals you've made? Whoa, okay, which one do you want to show first? Let's, let's see this one. What's this? This is a dragon, an ice cream dragon from a book called Wings of Fire that I read. It, it's supposed to have a lot more spikes on it, but... Look at that detail, though. You've, you've got the feet here, you got, got that tail. Spikes, spikes on the tail. That's awesome. All right, and the other one here? This this is my bird. What kind of bird is this? A peregrine falcon from a, and it's, it's also from a book called Rifle Side of the Mountain, and that's the name of the Okay, bird. here, can you perch on my hand there? You mean she. Oh, she, sorry. The wings also move, the head moves, and the beak opens. That's awesome. Talons can open and close, the feet can go up to the tail feather, also the tail feather can move like most birds. Hey, hey, we're back. That was awesome. Thanks for showing that, Evan. So Keith actually has a tip. If you want to go a little further with these, these were like really simple things you could do, but you can start to get more sophisticated. You can make them more complex. So for example, Keith has a, has a trick. If you want to make a creature that has legs, it's a little trickier. Let's go back to Keith and he'll give you a tip on how to make a creature with legs. Here we go. Hey, Doug. This it's is the one I want to show. There we go. Wrap it around like that. So now if you see, we got a couple legs on that. We got some front legs. We'll get some back legs. I know Doug has some other things he wants to show everyone. So after we wrap up these two, you can try this at home. 
Not my best dog, but look at that. There we go. Give him a little Looks like a dinosaur. Feet. Oh yeah, maybe we call him a dinosaur. That is a yeah, that long neck. Um, and you know when you're when you're using multiple pieces of aluminum foil, sometimes it's helpful to have a little duct tape um, help hold these things on. So yeah, there we go. We got a little four-legged creature. We'll call that a, a dinosaur. Let's let's show them off what you did here. Um, it's yeah, ship, ship from Star Wars. There's the cab. Oh, it opens. Oh, should we push this? Piece of duct tape on. Stuffy comes out. And then you might have to like push his legs under a little to get him back in. And then close that back up. Boop. Boop. That's cool. All right, well, Cheers, let's, say, let's say bye to Doug here. Let him, let, him, let him show some other stuff. So thanks, Doug. Bye. Hope you guys have fun with this. Thanks, Keith and Evan. That's awesome. So, um, aluminum foil creatures, fun things, show and tell we've done around the house. What do you think? Should we do some questions now? You guys want to do some questions? Yeah. All right. So, we have tallied up votes, and we know the winning question from the poll before we started the live stream. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. So, we've got it written out, and do you want to be the one to read it? Okay. There we go. question for today is, what's faster, a person or an ostrich? Ooh, I thought that one might win. Okay, so this is a great question. What's faster, a person or an ostrich? Ostriches can run, so I assume the person asking the question probably has seen an ostrich run. And a lot of you might know that the fastest land animal is a cheetah, right? So if it was a person and a cheetah, it seems like maybe the cheetah would win. But how fast does an ostrich go exactly? So there's no better way than to just uh, find out by watching. And I looked up videos of this on YouTube and I found out that there's actually um, someone named Dennis who's a former football player who raced an actual ostrich. Are you ready to see this? All right, here we go. I might catch it. Go, 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 go! no contest. The ostrich left Dennis in the dust without even trying. Woo! That bird is fast! That is one fast bird. That was cool. So the ostrich won hands down. Now it turns out that ostrich was running about 45 miles an hour. That runner, he was only going about 25 miles an hour. So that's why the ostrich was so much farther ahead than him. Okay, you guys want to do another question? Yeah. Okay. I, I picked a question. Now, before I left the office, before we were in shelter in place, the one thing I didn't think to grab was the question jar. But we have an online question jar. So I picked one question from the online question jar. This is an actual question sent to us. Do you want to read it? Yes. Okay, here we go. Someone named Jessica in um, fourth grade um, has a question. She says, has anything like the coronavirus ever happened before? Ooh, Jessica, that is a great question. To want to know, has anything like what's going on in the world today happened in the past? Now, this is really interesting because for me and for a lot of the adults in your lives, nothing like this has happened in our lives. So if, if we've seemed a little bit like what's going on, what's happening, that's why. And this hasn't even happened in the life of a lot of your grandparents, and in some cases, your great-grandparents. Now, for me, my, my grandpa, he's 98 years old, he's still alive, and I call him every night, and he and I were talking about this. Let me see if I can pull up some pictures here. Okay, there's my grandpa right there, riding on his exercise bike. And he's 98 years old, and he told me that he's never seen anything like this in his life either. But he was born in 1921, and just a few years before he was born, 
His brothers and his mom and dad, they did live through something like this. There was a different Wait, virus. It's called the Spanish flu. It's called, yeah, it's a type of flu. And, and it was about, so it was about 102 years ago. And um, I wanted to show you a few pictures because I got curious and it was asking my grandpa about what did his family do um, when that happened over 100 years ago. And there's some pictures online. Now, this is not his family. Let me show you. But you can see that back then, oh, I can see if I can get this going. Everyone wore masks, just like they're wearing today, just like people are encouraging people to wear masks. So here's a picture of two kids wearing masks and school was canceled, just like what's going on today. Um, people couldn't gather in large groups when this was happening. Here's another picture I wanted to show you. Look at this one. There's a whole family wearing a mask. And what do you notice in the middle? Do you see that, Josie? Do you see who else has a mask on? Their cat even has a mask on. You see that? So to answer that question, a great question, Jessica, this, something like this has happened before, and we got through it, just like we're going to get through this as well. Now, I had a lot of fun doing this today, um, and I think we should do another special episode soon. In fact, just last night, I found out that there's some, a very special guest who wants to help answer questions from you. Now, I can't tell you who it is, it's a secret, but I can say that it's someone who's very far away, but you'll find out soon. Still, it might be a few weeks before I see you all again. So my friends and I at Mystery want to be here to still help answer your questions. So here's something we can do in the meantime. I'm going to put three questions up on screen here in just a minute. And if you and your family want to vote for one of the ones that you want, we will send it to you tomorrow. Okay, sound good? I'll put that up here in just a minute and I will say, have fun everyone and stay curious.